August 25, The Effects of Tyre's Destruction This is what the Sovereign Lord says, From the north I will bring King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon against Tyre. He is king of kings and brings his horses, chariots, charioteers, and great army. First, he will destroy your mainland villages. Then he will attack you by building a siege wall, constructing a ramp, and raising a roof of shields against you. He will pound your walls with battering rams and demolish your towers with sledgehammers. The hooves of his horses will choke the city with dust, and the noise of the charioteers and chariot wheels will shake your walls as they storm through your broken gates. His horsemen will trample through every street in the city. They will butcher your people, and your strong pillars will topple. They will plunder all your riches and merchandise and break down your walls. They will destroy your lovely homes and dump your stones and timbers and even your dust into the sea. I will stop the music of your songs. No more will the sound of harps be heard among your people. I will make your island a bare rock, a place for fishermen to spread their nets. You will never be rebuilt, for I, the Lord, have spoken. Yes, the Sovereign Lord has spoken." The Effect of Tyre's Destruction This is what the Sovereign Lord says to Tyre. The whole coastline will tremble at the sound of your fall, as the screams of the wounded echo in the continuing slaughter. All the seaport rulers will step down from their thrones and take off their royal robes and beautiful clothing. They will sit on the ground trembling with horror at your destruction. Then they will wail for you, singing this funeral song. O famous island city, once ruler of the sea, how you have been destroyed. Your people, with their naval power, once spread fear around the world. Now the coastlands tremble at your fall. The islands are dismayed as you disappear. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will make Tyre an uninhabited ruin, like many others. I will bury you beneath the terrible waves of enemy attack. Great seas will swallow you. I will send you to the pit to join those who descended there long ago. Your city will lie in ruins, buried beneath the earth, like those in the pit who have entered the world of the dead. You will have no place of respect here in the land of the living. I will bring you to a terrible end, and you will exist no more. You will be looked for, but you will never again be found. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. The End of Tyre's Glory Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, sing a funeral song for Tyre, that mighty gateway to the sea, the trading center of the world. Give Tyre this message from the Sovereign Lord. You boasted, O Tyre. My beauty is perfect. You extended your boundaries into the sea. Your builders made your beauty perfect. You were like a great ship built of the finest cypress from Sinar. They took a cedar from Lebanon to make a mast for you. They carved your oars from the oaks of Bashan. Your deck of pine from the coasts of Cyprus was inlaid with ivory. Your sails were made of Egypt's finest linen, and they flew as a banner above you. You stood beneath blue and purple awnings made bright with dyes from the coasts of Elisha. Your oarsmen came from Sidon and Aravad. Your helmsmen were skilled men from Tyre itself." Wise old craftsmen from Gebel did the caulking. Ships from every land came with goods to barter for your trade. Men from distant Persia, Lydia, and Libya served in your great army. They hung their shields and helmets on your walls, giving you great honor. Men from Arvad and Helix stood on your walls. Your towers were manned by men from Gamad. Their shields hung on your walls, completing your beauty. Tarshish sent merchants to buy your wares in exchange for silver, iron, tin, and lead. Merchants from Greece, Tubal, and Meshech brought slaves and articles of bronze to trade with you. From Tagarma came riding horses, chariot horses, and mules, all in exchange for your goods. Merchants came to you from Dedan. Numerous coastlines were your captive markets. They brought payment in ivory tusks and ebony wood. Syria sent merchants to buy your rich variety of goods. They traded turquoise, purple dyes, embroidery, fine linen, and jewelry of coral and rubies. Judah and Israel traded for your wares, offering wheat from minneth, figs, honey, olive oil, and balm. Damascus sent merchants to buy your rich variety of goods, bringing wine from Helban and white wool from Zahar. Greeks from Uzal came to trade for your merchandise. Wrought iron, cassia, and fragrant calamus were bartered for your wares. 
Dedan sent merchants to trade their expensive saddle blankets with you. The Arabians and the princes of Kedar sent merchants to trade lambs and rams and male goats in exchange for your goods. The merchants of Sheba and Ramah came with all kinds of spices, jewels, and gold in exchange for your wares. Haran, Cana, Eden, Sheba, Ashur, and Kilmad came with their merchandise, too. They brought choice fabrics to trade, blue cloth, embroidery, and multicolored carpets rolled up and bound with cords. The ships of Tarshish were your ocean caravans. Your island warehouse was filled to the brim. The Destruction of Tyre But look! Your oarsmen have taken you into stormy seas. A mighty eastern gale has wrecked you in the heart of the sea. Everything is lost, your riches and wares, your sailors and pilots, your shipbuilders, merchants, and warriors. On the day of your ruin, everyone on board sinks into the depths of the sea. Your cities by the sea tremble as your pilots cry out in terror. All the oarsmen abandon their ships. The sailors and pilots on shore come to stand on the beach. They cry aloud over you and weep bitterly. They throw dust on their heads and roll in ashes. They shave their heads in grief for you and dress themselves in burlap. They weep for you with bitter anguish and deep mourning. As they wail and mourn over you, they sing this sad funeral song. Was there ever such a city as Tyre, now silent at the bottom of the sea? The merchandise you traded satisfied the desires of many nations. Kings at the ends of the earth were enriched by your trade. Now you are a wrecked ship, broken at the bottom of the sea. All your merchandise and crew have gone down with you. All who live along the coastlands are appalled at your terrible fate. Their kings are filled with horror and look on with twisted faces. The merchants among the nations shake their heads at the sight of you, for you have come to a horrible end and will exist no more. A Message for Tyre's King Then this message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give the prince of Tyre this message from the sovereign Lord. In your great pride you claim, I am a god. I sit on a divine throne in the heart of the sea. But you are only a man and not a god, though you boast that you are a god. You regard yourself as wiser than Daniel and think no secret is hidden from you. With your wisdom and understanding, you have amassed great wealth, gold and silver for your treasuries. Yes, your wisdom has made you very rich, and your riches have made you very proud. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Because you think... You are as wise as a god. I will now bring against you a foreign army, the terror of the nations. They will draw their swords against your marvelous wisdom and defile your splendor. They will bring you down to the pit, and you will die in the heart of the sea, pierced with many wounds. Will you then boast, I am a god, to those who kill you? To them you will be no god, but merely a man. You will die like an outcast at the hands of foreigners. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. Then this further message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, sing this funeral song for the king of Tyre. Give him this message from the Sovereign Lord. You are the model of perfection, full of wisdom and exquisite in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone. Red carnelian, pale green peridot, white moonstone, blue-green beryl, onyx, green jasper, blue lapis lazuli, turquoise, and emerald, all beautifully crafted for you and set in the finest gold. They were given to you on the day you were created. I ordained and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stones of fire. You were blameless in all you did from the day you were created until the day evil was found in you. Your rich commerce led you to violence and you sinned. So I banished you in disgrace from the mountain of God. I expelled you, O mighty guardian, from your place among the stones of fire. Your heart was filled with pride because of all your beauty. Your wisdom was corrupted by your love of splendor. So I threw you to the ground and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. You defiled your sanctuaries with your many sins and your dishonest trade. So I brought fire out from within you, and it consumed you. I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching, all who knew you are appalled at your fate. You have come to a terrible end, and you will exist no more. A Message for Sidon 
Then another message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, turn and face the city of Sidon and prophesy against it. Give the people of Sidon this message from the sovereign Lord. I am your enemy, O Sidon, and I will reveal my glory by what I do to you. When I bring judgment against you and reveal my holiness among you, everyone watching will know that I am the Lord. I will send a plague against you, and blood will be spilled in your streets. The attack will come from every direction, and your people will lie slaughtered within your walls. Then everyone will know that I am the Lord. No longer will Israel's scornful neighbors prick and tear at her like briars and thorns, for then they will know that I am the sovereign Lord." Restoration for Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The people of Israel will again live in their own land, the land I gave my servant Jacob. For I will gather them from the distant lands where I have scattered them. I will reveal to the nations of the world my holiness among my people. They will live safely in Israel and build homes and plant vineyards. And when I punish the neighboring nations that treated them with contempt, they will know that I am the Lord their God. The Fall of Jerusalem By July 18, in the eleventh year of Zedekiah's reign, the famine in the city had become very severe, and the last of the food was entirely gone. Then a section of the city wall was broken down, and all the soldiers fled. Since the city was surrounded by the Babylonians, they waited for nightfall. Then they slipped through the gate between the two walls behind the king's garden and headed toward the Jordan Valley. But the Babylonian troops chased the king and caught him on the plains of Jericho, for his men had all deserted him and scattered. They took him to the king of Babylon at Riblah, where they pronounced judgment upon Zedekiah. They made Zedekiah watch as they slaughtered his sons. Then they gouged out Zedekiah's eyes, bound him in bronze chains, and led him away to Babylon. By July 18, in the eleventh year of Zedekiah's reign, the famine in the city had become very severe and the last of the food was entirely gone. Then a section of the city wall was broken down, and all the soldiers fled. Since the city was surrounded by the Babylonians, they waited for nightfall. Then they slipped through the gate between the two walls behind the king's garden and headed toward the Jordan Valley. But the Babylonian troops chased King Zedekiah and caught him on the plains of Jericho, for his men had all deserted him and scattered. They took him to the king of Babylon at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, There the king of Babylon pronounced judgment upon Zedekiah. He made Zedekiah watch as they slaughtered his sons and all the other officials of Judah. Then they gouged out Zedekiah's eyes, bound him in bronze chains, and led him away to Babylon. Zedekiah remained there in prison until the day of his death. Two and a half years later, on July 18, in the eleventh year of Zedekiah's reign, the Babylonians broke through the wall, and the city fell. All the officers of the Babylonian army came in and sat in triumph at the middle gate. Nurgle Sharizer of Samgar, and Nebo Sarsikam, a chief officer, and Nurgle Sharizer, the king's advisor, and all the other officers. When King Zedekiah and all the soldiers saw that the Babylonians had broken into the city, they fled. They waited for nightfall and then slipped through the gate between the two walls behind the king's garden and headed toward the Jordan Valley. But the Babylonian troops chased the king and caught him on the plains of Jericho. They took him to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who is at Riblah in the land of Hamath. There the king of Babylon pronounced judgment upon Zedekiah. He made Zedekiah watch as they slaughtered his sons and all the nobles of Judah. Then they gouged out Zedekiah's eyes, bound him in bronze chains, and led him away to Babylon. Meanwhile, the Babylonians burned Jerusalem including the palace, and tore down the walls of the city. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, sent to Babylon the rest of the people who remained in the city, as well as those who had defected to him. But Nebuzaradan left a few of the poorest people in Judah, and he assigned them vineyards and fields to care for. 